Thank you, brothers and sisters, for that welcome. And thank you for this opportunity to talk with you this evening. I thought a great deal about what's happening to our children in public schools. Now, most of the time when I come over here, that's what I talk to you about because that's really where my life is centered. But it occurred to me that uh, Alton's been in this struggle uh, and I'm very concerned about how we're progressing in it. Uh, so I thought a lot about it, sisters and brothers, and uh, titled what I want to share with you tonight called Black People Still Don't Get It. For some time now, I have been trying to get the idea over that black people must take charge of their lives and those of their children. Um, we, we can't leave this to other people to do because they're not going to do it. And we cannot sit around wringing our hands and shaking our heads and talking. It's getting late, brothers and sisters, especially for our children. Now when, the way, when it gets to the point that the way we live is destructive and leads to our extermination, then we have to think about what has happened to our culture. And we need to take a long, serious look at our condition now. Amen, go right there. Go ahead. If culture is the sum total of artifacts which any group accumulates in its struggle for survival and autonomy, yeah. then it's dynamic because it's a struggle. It's not static. It doesn't stand still and never change. Right. It changes with the condition. Okay, because as you try to survive and to be self-autonomous and the conditions change that keep you from doing that, you change in order to combat those conditions. Yeah. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Now, what is, what, is, what is survival? I mean, you know, what, survival means that the group has to do at, at least three things. One, the group has to see that each individual member keeps himself or herself in good enough mental, right. moral, spiritual, mm -hmm. and physical health right. long enough to reproduce that self right. and then take care of whatever you reproduce. Right. That's the least. All right. if, you don't, if you don't do that, the group dies. It's gone. Right. Okay. So that's what survival means. In order to be self-autonomous, it means that the group has to have within its control the means to assure its survival. Yeah. All right. You can't depend on nobody else to do that. All right. That's not going to happen. That's not the way the world works. Now, what are the chief obstacles to survival? Okay. Let's just be real. What are they? One is nature. You've got to have within the means of the group some way for the group to survive earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever. All right. Right? So nature is one. Other men and women who might want to take your land, water, means of survival. All right. And yourself. All right. You can't become no cotton-picking drug addict, alcoholic, and kill yourself. All right. Right? That's right. Okay. Those are the obstacles. Now... The culture that we pass down from generation to generation is supposed to help the group to survive and to be self-autonomous. The major way that we pass this culture on is through what? Groups, family, right. church, All school, right. organizations like this. All right. Those are the means. Okay, now, unfortunately for us, we live in a country where the overriding values of the country are against us. Mm -hmm. For instance, these overriding values put in the positions of privilege, mm -hmm. people who are white, 
people who are male and people who are wealthy. And these three groups dominate the society. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about teaching our children instrumental values like equality, liberty, fraternity, etc., we are talking about ordering those values under the institutional values of race, gender, and wealth. So that more white people get equality, liberty, and fraternity than black people, more men get equality, liberty, and fraternity than women, and more wealthy people get equality, liberty, and fraternity than poor people. You get it? All right. All right. All right. This doesn't do enough then, ladies and gentlemen, for us to teach our children about the instrumental values, you know, if we don't teach them the impact of the institutional values on the distribution of the latter. Otherwise, our kids don't get the full message and don't know how to behave. Now, when I was a young woman looking for a job in 1947, the newspapers would advertise, no Negroes need apply. Right. Chicago, Illinois, March 28, 1947. Chicago, Illinois. I did not say Mississippi. All right. North. I was up north. Mm-hmm. All right. Right. So, what did that say? That said that at in March 28, 1947, when I was looking for my first job, affirmative action was for white people. Now, just because we didn't call it that then, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't mean it wasn't. And now that it's our turn to have affirmative action, it's suddenly no turns, no turns. It's always our turn, right? It's always white people's turn for affirmative action. Nobody else gets a turn. So, so much for taking turns. But isn't that what we teach for two weeks in kindergarten? Oh, the teacher tells you, your child has to learn to take a turn. We teach him to take a turn in kindergarten. Take a turn in first grade. Take a turn in second grade. Wait your turn in third grade. Don't butt in fourth grade. Stay in line in fifth grade. When you get to be an adult, you stand and queue up at the cashier. Take your turn. Wait your turn. But don't nobody take no turns in this country. It's always the white man's turn. It's always the rich man's turn. It's always their turn. All right. So, so much for taking right. turns. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Plessy versus Ferguson, which legalized Jim Crow. And the overt racism that we knew as Jim Crow was forbidden. And most Negroes, now calling themselves black, thought the problem was solved. Black folks just didn't get it. We just didn't get it. We thought that the problem was segregation. But segregation was a symbol of the problem. The problem was this institutional value system of race, gender, and wealth. That's the problem. And ladies and gentlemen, it still is. The United States is not a democracy yet. It's trying to be. You know, trying to be. And I always tell my students when they say, I'm trying to do it, Miss Sizemore, I say, come here. And I say, I'm trying to hit you. I'm, I'm trying to hit you. Right? I'm trying to hit you. And then when I finish, I say, did I hit you? And he said, no. I said, so much for trying. But, but the United States is a capitalist country. It is that. Now, if it can be a democracy within the parameters prescribed by the capitalist paradigm, it does it. But when it can't, it won't. The basic premise of capitalism is to make a profit by any means necessary. And the unit of measure is the United States dollar. And ladies and gentlemen, it is taboo to teach this to your children. When I say taboo, I mean it's forbidden. For instance, if anybody gets up in front of a class and tries to teach